Welcome to Electron Line. As you can see, we're slowly increasing the difficulty level of finding the electric field due to the presence of some charges. In this case, we have two positive and a negative charge at the corners of an equilateral triangle. Each side is 0.5 meters in length, and therefore the interior angles are all 60 degrees. And we're trying to find the electric field at the halfway point between the positive and negative charge on the base of the triangle right here. Again, we follow the same procedure. We start out by drawing the vectors and labeling them. Notice we have labeled the three charges, Q1, Q2, and Q3. So as a result, for Q1, we're going to have an electric field from here pointing to the right because electric fields emanate away from positive charges. So there we go. So this would be E1, like this. Now for E2, notice we're going to have electric field pointing downward at that location because it's away from Q2. Like this, so this will be E2. Again, using subscripts makes it a lot easier. And then we have electric field towards the negative charge and that would then be in this direction here. So this would be E3. And notice, if we're going to sum up all these three vectors, we're going to end up with a vector pointing somewhere off at an angle. And we're going to probably have to find the magnitude and direction. So we'll probably have to follow all of these steps now to get the final answer. So at least we've done step one. We drew the vectors and we labeled them. So now we're ready to move on. Find the magnitude of those three vectors. So let's go ahead and do that. So we have E1 is equal to k, q1 divided by the distance from there to the point of interest, squared, and so this is equal to 9 times 10 to the 9th newtons per coulomb, and again, that's the final uh, answer, that's the final unit for the answer. The charge would be 8 microcoulombs, 8 times 10 to the minus 6, and we divide that by the distance, Notice the distance between the charges is 0.5, so half the distance would be 0.25 meters, and we have to square that. There's a decimal place right there. And let's see what that's equal to. So we have 9e to the 9th times 8e to the 6 minus divided by 0.25 squared equals, and let's see here, wow, that's a big number, 1,152,000. It would be 1,152,000 newtons per coulomb. Okay, how about E2? E2 is equal to K, Q2 divided by R2 squared, so this is equal to 9 times 10 to the 9th newtons per coulomb times 3 times 10 to the minus 6 and divide by the distance. Now we need this vertical distance right here. If this is 60 degrees, then this here is 30 degrees. And notice that this is the opposite side. So if we call this distance x, for this, so we'll just call that x, we'll call that x. We don't want the distance. So we know that the sine of 30 degrees is equal to the ratio of the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. Since we're looking for the opposite side, we can say that the opposite side is equal to the hypotenuse times the sine of 30 degrees. The opposite side is x, the hypotenuse is 0.5 meters, and the sine of 30 is 1 half, so this is equal to 0.25 meters. Hmm, does that make sense? Something doesn't seem right. Oh, I'm not looking for the opposite side. I'm looking for the adjacent side. I'm looking for this distance right here. So let's call this distance D. And so instead of doing that, I need the cosine. So I was looking for the wrong side. Well, that happens when you don't pay attention and I was not paying attention. So let's try this again. So I'm looking for D. The distance D is going to be equal to the hypotenuse 0.5 meters multiplied times the cosine of 30 degrees and so this is going to be equal to 0.5 times 30, take the cosine, equals, that's 0.433 meters. So 0.433 meters, that's the distance, and that's what goes in here, 
0 0.433, and we have to square that. So now we're ready to calculate the strength of the electric field. So let's see, we square that, take the inverse of that, times 9e to the 9th, times 3e to the 6 minus equals, and that's 144,000 newtons, 144,000 newtons per coulomb. And now we find E3. So it's equal to K Q3 divided by R3 squared, which again is 9 times 10 to the 9th newtons per coulomb, times 5 times 10 to the minus 6. And again, we don't use the negative sign because we're simply using, uh, looking for the magnitude. And then divide, again, that would be 0 0.25 quantity squared. So 9e to the 9th times 5e to the 6 minus divided by 0.25 squared equals that 720,000. That would be equal to 720,000 newtons per coulomb. All right, so now we've done step two. You can see as things get more complicated, they take a little bit more time. So now we have the magnitudes, now we want to find the x and y components. Well, there we don't have to do that because all the components are either in the x direction or the y direction. So that makes that at least a little bit easier, don't have to do step three. Now we're ready to go to step four. We're going to add all the x components and all the y components together. So to find the electric field, that is going to be equal to, first let's add all the x components together, which is E1 and E3 both pointing to the right. That would be a positive E1 plus a positive E3 and in the positive x direction. Now we add up all the y components. There's only one. It's pointing in the negative direction. So it would be uh, plus a negative E2 in the y direction. So that will give us a negative y direction. So now let's go ahead and eat that, uh, add that up. E1. 1,152,000 newtons per coulomb plus E3, which is 720,000 newtons per coulomb, all in the x direction, minus E2, which is 144,000 newtons per coulomb in the y direction. And so this would be the answer if we want this in vector format. And so sometimes they say, that's good enough. Oh, well, we're not quite there yet. We need to combine them. Well, I'm hurting things up a little too much. Let me go one step further. E is equal to, add that together, that would be 1,872,000 newtons per coulomb in the x direction, minus 144,000 newtons per coulomb in the y direction. All right, so that would be the final answer in vector format. But sometimes they don't want it in vector format. Sometimes they want it in magnitude and direction format. In other words, if you draw this final result, you can see that this would look something like this. So this would be E. And the, the angle relative to the x-axis, let's call that phi. And so what they want you to do then is find the magnitude of the resultant and the angle relative to some axis, and usually the positive x-axis. So let's go ahead and do that. So the magnitude of E is equal to the square root of the x component of E squared plus the y component of E squared. So in this case, that's the square root of 1872000 squared plus 144000 quantity squared. Notice we don't care if that's a positive or negative because we're squaring it anyway. So let's see what that's equal to. 1872000 squared plus 144000 squared equals take the square root and we have 178,000 basically. So rounded off, we can say that the magnitude of E is equal to 1,880,000 newtons per coulomb. So that would be the magnitude. And if you want to find the direction, the angle phi can be found by taking the inverse tangent of the opposite side, which is E sub y 
divided by e sub x. And again, we're looking for the magnitudes of those because we're simply looking for an angle between 0 and 90 degrees. So this is equal to the inverse tangent of e sub y, which is 144,000 e sub x, 1872000. So I just took the y component, then the x component, find the ratio, take the inverse tangent. So we have 144 divided by 1872, take the inverse tangent, and that's 4.4 degrees. So now we realize we have the magnitude of 1,880,000 newtons per coulomb at an angle of 4.4 degrees below the positive x-axis. There we go. You can see they're getting a little bit more involved, but if you follow the steps, they're not so bad. And that's how it's done.